Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're looking at Action Center and specifically we're looking at how to create external tasks and how we assign tasks in general to a specific user. Also, I have a small piece of bonus info at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really does make a difference to my channel. And if you like the channel as a whole, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when I put out more videos. But let's get to it. Okay, so before we jump into studio, I just want to make sure that everybody understands exactly what the uh, Action Center is. Action Center is this functionality in the platform that lets you run an automation up to a certain point where it can suspend itself until a certain condition is met. It could be that it needs some data in order to be able to continue, or it could be that it just needs confirmation that things are okay to uh, continue on until it is complete. So we can do that with Action Center. And in the first video of this series, I did it with what are called form actions. That is where a user is presented with a form that needs to be filled out. Once that form is filled out and the user clicks OK, the suspended automation can continue on. In this video, we're dealing with what are called external actions. And external actions are exactly what they sound like. They are external actions. They are things that are external to the automation space itself. But it's something that the automation depends on in order to run to completion successfully. So it could be, for example, as it is in this example, that we need to make sure that there's paper in that printer. So at some point, our automation is going to suspend itself, ask us to check that there's paper in the printer, and once we've checked that there's paper in the printer, we're just going to pretend to check. We will give the automation the OK to unsuspend itself or to resume, and then run until it is complete. So let's see how you can do that in Studio. Okay, so we're inside a completely empty project in Studio. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go to uh, Manage Packet, go to the official feed, and search for a package called Persistence something, UiPath Persistence Activities. Install it and click Save and wait for that package to install. Once that is complete, I want to go to the project uh, properties here, the project settings, and I want to enable this option called supports persistence and click OK. So now we are ready to actually build an automation with an external task inside of it. So we will go to our activities pane. And now that we install this persistence package, we can search for tasks inside of our activities. And we have this uh, activity called create external task. And I'll just drag that into my uh, sequence here. And we will enter a title for the uh, task. Please make sure there is paper in the printer. So this is a very external type of action. It could be also make sure that the windows are closed. It could be make sure that the dog has been fed. Something that is completely external to the automation, but that the automation depends on, as I said in order to be able to complete itself. So the task priority, we're not going to change. We're not going to assign this task to a certain task catalog. We're not even going to add any uh, additional task data to it. We are simply going to go to the task object output field down here, press Control K to create a new variable. And we will just call this uh, for my, my task object, right? So now that we've done this, we've actually built an automation that will create a task, uh, an external task uh, object. Now we need to wait for this task to be completed for the automation to then continue. So we will go to the uh, toolbox here and drag a wait for external task and resume activity into our sequence. The task object input is going to be my task object that we just created up here. And we will also add that as our task object output. And that's it. We've built an automation that uses an external task and waits for it to be completed before the automation resumes. So let's try and uh, let's just try and run this real quick. What we should see is that the uh, automation runs, and then the uh, debug file button up here should change to a resume button, and that's because the the automation goes into this suspended state where it's waiting for a user to complete the task inside of Action Center. 
So let's see what happens. Now we are in that uh, suspended state. It actually says it here. Execution has been suspended and is waiting for external events to complete. So how do we complete an external event? Well, we can go into our browser here. Let me just minimize the video and go into our browser. This is uh, this tab right here is Action Center. And we can see that we don't have any completed tasks. We don't have any uh, pending task. And if I go to the unassigned tasks, there should be a task and there is. Please make sure that there is paper in the printer. And as you can see, this task has not been assigned to a specific user. What happens if I go back into Studio now and click the resume button is that the automation will try to resume, but it can't because the task has not been completed. So back into Action Center, and even though the task has not been assigned to anyone, we can complete the task just by clicking that complete button. And now the task has been completed. It is over in the completed tab here. And now inside of Studio, if I press the resume button, the automation can run to completion and it does. So that's a very, very simple version of it. Now, as you saw, the task was not assigned to a specific user and we want to do that. For that, we need to use the assign tasks activity. We'll drag that into the middle of these two activities so that the task is assigned before we actually wait for it to be completed. So in order for us to assign a task, we need to enter the task ID. That is a property that we need to convert to a long. So we will get the my task object dot ID property and then convert it to a long data type. We will enter the email of the person that we want to assign, to assign this task to. to. That by coincidence is going to be my email address. There we go. And we can either choose to assign the uh, task or reassign the task. And reassignment is something you use if you have assigned a task to someone who hasn't completed it by a certain amount of time, then you can, in your automation, actually reassign that task by using the reassign um, a task assignment type. And that's it. That's all we're going to do. So if I run this same automation now, and instead of just showing it in Action Center, I'm actually going to connect to my phone. There we go, there's my phone. I will open the Orchestrator app. It will uh, sign me in. And we can see here inside of the actions that there is one completed action, and that's probably the one we completed just a second ago. If I go to pending tasks, there are none. If there are completed tasks, there's uh, just that one we, we just did a few seconds ago. So if we uh, go to pending tasks now and run the automation, the automation should now be assigned to the same user that I am signed into my phone as. So if I run the automation, once the automation up here in Studio goes into that suspended mode where we get the resume button, and that is approximately now, if I now on my phone here just uh, swipe down to refresh this view of pending tasks, if we're lucky, we get a new task. And I can just on my phone tap with my finger on the task and it'll ask me, do you want to complete the task? I'll say yes or complete. Now the task itself has been completed and then we can go back to the automation and I'll just minimize the phone and then resume the automation and it should run to completion and it does. So that's really how simple this stuff is. Now let's try to publish this to Orchestrator so we can see how would this look in a real world scenario. So I'll publish my automation and let's call it uh, my external task automation, right? And publish it. There we go. Our package has been published. And if we go into our browser, into our orchestrator, we can inside of the demos folder here see that we don't have any processes. So if I add a new process, we can see that we have the My External Task Automation package. We'll add that and create the process. And now we don't really need Studio anymore because now we have a deployed package in Orchestrator. What we want to do is we want to run this process on this virtual machine that I have here. This is my demo uh, robot virtual machine. So if I choose to run this, what should happen is that the automation should sign in to this machine here in the background, 
try to run the automation and it will then reach that point where it cannot run anymore until someone completes their task inside of Action Center or inside my phone. So um, let's try and run it and see what happens. As soon as we click start, we see the uh, jobs list here. And we can see in the background that something is trying to sign into my virtual machine. We can also see that the status of the job right now is running. That should change fairly soon to suspended. Let's see if that happens. There we go. The job is now suspended and the user or the robot signs out of the robot machine again. So now we have a job that is suspended. And if we go back to my phone, look at the pending actions and refresh it by swiping down, we see that there's a new uh, task needing to be completed. And I'll just tap on the task. And as soon as I hit complete, what should happen is that Orchestrator detects that now the task has been completed and it should then automatically resume the robot. We should see the robot sign into the virtual machine and then run to completion, and then the job should be successful. So I will tap the complete button now. We can see that the running status uh, changed, and we can see that it is now signing into the robot machine, running that very, very simple automation that really doesn't do anything. And once it is done, the job status changes to successful and the automation is done. So in the beginning, I promised you a little piece of bonus information, and that is that tomorrow on Wednesday, August 16th, 2023, uh, UiPath is um, having their monthly demo day of new features in the latest release, uh, the 2023.8 release. I'm going to put a link to that event in the description below. I'm also going to, if you are watching this after the fact that that has aired tomorrow on Wednesday, um, you will have a link to uh, the playlist on YouTube so you can go and watch more stuff over there. Um, they have some really cool features. They want to demo stuff in studio, but especially something I talked about in my video last week, which was the feature in UiPath Automation Hub where you can customize the whole automation flow. I'm really looking forward to seeing how much you can do and how it works. Uh, so I will be watching. I hope you will be too. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.